This is not survival. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay guys, so today I just have to talk about this. It's been something that's been troubling me in the survival community now for a quick minute and similar to the No More Survival Knives video, uh, this is a learning point that I feel is necessary to share and like I said, is a misconception going on in the survival, bushcraft, outdoor community. Now, what I'm talking about is micro, tiny survival kits and survival cards. And today we're going to be talking about why the, they are bad for survival and why you should not get them, believe in them, trust in them, or use them. So while this particular kit here is made by Ultimate Survival Tips, the YouTube channel, and I'm going to make a separate video about David, this isn't necessarily a specific diss on this survival card. Uh, this is just merely the one that I'm using as an example to make an example of all the rest. Ultimately, they're all the same and none of them are great. <clears throat> So let's jump into this. Why do these tiny survival cards, survival kits, why are they bad? So before we jump into it, I want to talk about a kind of personal experience that was a real shifting point in my perception on micro survival kits, survival cards like these, and kind of what I should have seen and what I should have learned. Now, if you guys know, a few months ago I made my own little micro Altoid survival kit, and I thought it was a pretty cool idea and a pretty fun uh, experiment or test of my survival skills and, you know, kind of trying to condense things. And that is ultimately what I like about the micro survival kit and survival card scene. Uh, it's a really great thought experiment. However, there was a particular viewer uh, who challenged that. And in this comment, they essentially asked or posed the question of why limit yourself? Why, you know, force yourself to unrealistic confines and sacrifice with useless gear? Gear that isn't going to be able to be effectively fielded in your use of survival or in your survival situation. And at the time, I just kind of brushed it off, but this, this question never really sat well with me. And I was thinking about it more and more. And once again, you know, coming across so many YouTubers doing videos on, you know, things like these t tiny survival cards or micro survival kit challenges, it became really apparent to me that there's a culture that exists on YouTube and in the survival community of, you know, making uh, these small survival kits or designing survival cards like these and actually selling them, promoting them, trying to make them a thing. And let's talk about the dangers of tiny survival kits, tiny survival cards, and all that fun jazz. So the first thing is, realistically, especially with these survival cards, let's actually take a look at a real-life survival card and see what kind of uh, goodies are in here. And when you do that, when you take even just a five-second look at this uh, survival card, and you know this one being probably one of the more high-end survival cards, you look and you just see really useless, pathetic tools. Things that I honestly sit here and say, you know, what do you think you're going to do with this uh, survival knife? Do you think you're actually going to be able to build anything? Do you think you can really feather stick? Do you think you can really field this tool in an effective survival manner? Need I mind you, this is what it looks like from the side, but this is what it looks like from the top down. This is thin. This is insanely thin. This is ridiculous. And then I start to look at it and I'm like, so, you know, you can't build a shelter with this knife. Absolutely, there's no way. You know, what are you going to hunt with this broadhead here? Nothing. I mean, you know, you might be able to catch or, you know, hit or kill a hare or a squirrel, maybe, with this. But do you think you're really honestly going to take the time to lash this onto a piece of wood? I mean, if you want to kill a rabbit or a hare, just throw a stick at it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need a specialized broadhead that you have to affix to a arrow head or arrow shaft that you also have to make. And need I mind you, you probably will also have to make the bow. 
so this becomes so unrealistic that, you know, what are you going to do? You know, we've just established that you can throw a stick at a rabbit and kill it. So you can throw a stick at a grouse and kill it. You know, you don't need an arrowhead, so what are you going to do? Are you going to kill a moose with this broadhead? No, it's not strong enough and it's not large enough. You know, what are you going to do with these little, you know, treble hooks and these little hooks here? Are you going to catch a pike with them? No, a pike would easily bend this hook. I've had pike bend better hooks than these flimsy pieces of crap. So I look at this and I'm like, there's no use in this kit right here. There's nothing here that is actually usable. I mean, the only thing that you might could possibly really use in this are these little, you know, kind of spear git or jigs. And, you know, you might be able to jig some frogs with it, but once again, you know, there are usually better tools that you can craft in the woods. Or, like I said, just pick up a stick and smack the frog in the head, you know. Survival isn't complicated like this. And the last point that I want to make with these micro survival kits and these survival cards especially, uh, but really both of them, the biggest issue that I have with them and the thing that I really have to get off my chest and like I said, this is what I have to explain is the fact that when we buy kits like this, when we promote kits like this, when we do reviews and try and sell this type of garbage, it promotes with viewers and people who are less initiated and with a, a more naive understanding of the woods, it gives them a sense of comfort or security. It makes them believe that all they have to do is carry this little kit in their back pocket and should something arise when they're hiking should you know tra trouble or disaster befall them they can properly field this equipment to affect their survival and i think that that's the most dangerous thing about these tiny survival kits and cards is that they promote a false sense of security and the worst part about that is it's a false sense of security at the cost or that promotes a benefit for someone else i mean i purposely went out and spent you know money on this but a lot of people go and buy these things not knowing any better so people like david from ultimate survival tips are making a quick buck off of you thinking that you are getting a good survival tool something that's really useful something that can really save you in a pinch and this just can't there's i mean for instance this blade right here isn't even sharp i mean look at this guys i mean i wouldn't do this on a normal knife but i can run my finger like this and i mean heck it's not even cutting me like you can see here there's no blood coming out you know this thing isn't even sharpened i mean <laughs> just to add insult to injury you know the tools here aren't even useful i mean you know i might give them more of a, a commendation if the actual blade was sharp but you know this thing doesn't even have a grind on it there's nothing so you know it's just garbage it's just pure and utter garbage <laughs> so in the end I want to make a similar sentiment that I've made in a lot of my different videos before. This isn't anything necessarily new, it's just talking about a different side of survival. And that is, and I've said it like I said, I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, is you want to try to stay away from these illusions of tools that promise lots of uses. I believe, I don't think it says on here, oh it does say on here, uh, you know this says 17 tool, I'll pull this nice and close for you guys, 17 tool survival kit with knife. And so anytime you see these kinds of multi-tool or multi-purpose kits like this that you know claim to offer so many different pieces and elements and tools you know it's they try to promise this grandeur of you know having such a useful you know little kit at your hands and it just fits in a, a wallet you know you can just slide this right in you know you just want to run away from this stuff. Anytime someone starts trying to use marketing key terms and, you know, starts trying to hype their tools up, whenever they're building it off of hype, you know, like I said, like 17 tool, you know, whenever they're trying to make it sound better than it is, it's, it probably isn't better than it is. Ultimately, you know, I drive back to the fact that real survival knives, things, you know, real bushcraft knives, real survival knives, they don't come out and make boisterous claims about being what they are they exist and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a 400 dollars survival knife the straight shf 42d 
42, 52, something like that. The Schrade SEHF 42D is an excellent, you know, little uh, sub $50 survival knife, but it doesn't make any claims to be, you know, some 15 tool or 15, you know, some 15 or 17 tool survival knife, you know, like it, it's just a knife. It's, it is a knife and it works good at being a knife. And so whenever you see these kinds of marketing terms, you know, where it's like, be prepared because you never know. And, you know, just garbage like this. It's just, it's not worth it, guys. It, don't do it. Like I said, these little hooks right here, I'm here to tell you guys, I haven't even broken them off. But these little hooks, the moment something real catches on one of these hooks, I'll break one of them off to show you guys. You know, it's going to twist, it's going to bend, it might even break. And remember with a hook, you know, like this, I mean, this thing is pathetically tiny. And with a hook like this, I mean, it's just not quality. It's going to bend, it's going to, you know, lose its shape. You might, you might catch one, like, grayling or really small trow off of this, but, you know, it's not going to be a quality tool by any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, you know, it's not really going to be helpful. You could make, a, honestly, a better hook out of, you know, one of those little pull tabs on a, a, like, a tin can would be better than these. So, anyways, guys, ultimately, the key to survival is preparation. But the key to survival is proper preparation. And I just want to make a video, or I wanted to make a video on this kit because the reality is this is not proper preparation. And... I don't want people, you know, going out there, one, spending their hard-earned money on this garbage, and two, you know, thinking, like I said, worst of all, thinking that, you know, they have the adequate equipment and tools to survive out in the woods with this, uh, this just straight-up garbage. So, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm trying to not rant too much, but ultimately, guys, just don't buy into this, you know, crap. And whenever you start to see, you know, 17 tools survival kit, you know, just start running. Whenever they have to try to hype up, you know, their little survival card by saying, you know, it's a knife, it's an arrowhead, it's a saw, it has hooks, you know, finger drill. I don't even know what the hell a finger drill is. You know, it has needles, it has tweezers, you know. Whenever they start to have to hype up this equipment by trying to get you to see all the multi-functionality, each one of those tools, because there's multiple, you know, it, you're stretching your, your dollar. Like, this costed $20. So, you know, I'm stretching my $20 bill over the course of 17 tools. So you know that each tool is going to be reasonably cheap in uh, design and function and build quality because you know it's hard to put together a quality tool for about a dollar because if you look at it like I said 17 tools for twenty dollars you know it's about a dollar it's a little bit more but it's about a dollar a tool so every time you know anytime you're looking at that it's just like really think you know each penny or each dollar is going into building one tool you know it's not going to be a quality tool when it takes a dollar to manufacture and that's not even talking about, you know, the marketing garbage that this comes in. You know, this isn't even just a survival card. It has these two little magnets here. Anyways, I'm not going to rant any further, guys. You get it. You understand. Hopefully this has uh, helped you guys. I mean, like I said, I've seen some pretty, I would say, respectable names online or on YouTube talking about even this very survival card here. You know, trying to talk about its pros and its merits. So I just want to come out and say, guys, regardless to who's talking about it or how much they say positive about this particular tool or this particular survival card or any survival card for that matter, don't believe them. These are garbage. Keep your money. Save that $20. Put that $20 on a solid ferro rod. That would be a much better uh, way to spend $20 than on this stupid survival card.